Transfers are all done. We've moved a bunch of players out. We've moved a bunch of players in and we're ready for our second campaign in Serie A. The goal finished better than we did last season in 13th place. If we can do that, we've made progress. I will be a happy camper. Come along for the ride. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have to say that on the YouTube. Anyway, it's time for some more Project Palermo. Welcome to Project Palomo. I am your old mate DP here in the DP Dome. I was going to say live in the DP Dome, but this is recorded. You're watching it on YouTube. We're not live at all. That would be a lie. And we destroy the trust, the bond of trust that we've built over the last chunk of episodes. Anyway, we have survived our first season in Syria, and now we need to press on and rise up the table. We finished in 13th. Last season, we're currently sitting in 12th. Some teams have already played and we are yet to, but we will play Lecce today, the lecherous Lecce and Udinese, who caused us some problems last season, if you'll recall. They might have. Maybe we beat them. I don't even remember. That was a million years ago. If you missed the transfer special, you should go and watch that. Take an hour out of your life and check it out because we have done some business. But for the game against Lecce, we have a very new look squad, which is uh, exciting to say the least. And the least is what I will say. We don't have any lines because we've basically gutted the team. Not many have survived the cull. But for our first match of the season against Lecce, and my other computer is making noises, so let me just shut that up. I could stop recording and redo that whole intro, but I've already done that like six times, full disclosure. A little, little peek behind the curtain for you. Fruitdal will be in goal. Antonio Gallo, who was trained at Palermo at left back. Mercandali and Walukowicz, we know them very well from last season as our centre-back pairing with Perotti on the right. New boy Adopo is our half-back. That's right, we've got a half-back now. Uh, Ranokia and Obanski, or Obarski, Obanski. I'm still learning names of players are our central midfielders, Amazala, and an advanced playmaker, don't you know? Very, very fancy. And then we've got Saidi and Garan Kuo, another Australian uh, on the right, and Evandro. I'm very excited about this guy, a striker. He's Brazilian. He's 18 years old. He's got good numbers. He's got a wonky love heart. He's rubbish in the air, but that doesn't matter. He's going to score goals, and it's going to be awesome. Christian Valpato would be starting on the right, but he's picked up a knock. He's injured. I'm also trying to get rid of this uh, David Vice guy if I can, or I'll bump him back down to the under 20s uh, because reasons. Reasons. Yep. And he's not very good. So that is our squad for our first game in Serie A for this season. We've already won a game in the Copa Italia. We got past Vicenza 3 1, which you can see at the end of the transfer special, but you've got to watch everything leading up to that, or, or the game won't make any sense in isolation. It's like the Marvel movies. You've got to see all of them, or you're just lost. It's exactly the same thing. That's the I'm building a Palermo universe. Just like Marvel, it is exactly the same, and you can tell by the quality of my crappy green screen effect in the intro. Lecce have players. We've just seen them on the screen. Here we are. We've got players too. So two can play at that game. Lecce, in your face. Right, skip all this nonsense and let's get into the game and see if we're any good. It's a brand new tactic that we're not fully tactically familiar with just yet, but we've got a free kick here. Here's Urbanski to take. And we're used to seeing other people do that, but that was a really good free kick, forcing the save from the keeper. Kowal now taking it a little bit deeper. We'll run a key of bursting inside and we almost turned over possession. We won it back, but the highlight ended. I'm very excited about the new squad. I think we've strengthened, strengthened in the right areas. We've added a little bit of depth, which is nice. We've moved out some of the underperforming dead weight. We haven't filled it with a bunch of lone players that we're not going to use that will upset dynamics and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, I think we're much better off. Uh, and no Mancuso this season. Uh, to annoy me and frustrate me and be rubbish at scoring goals, which is his one job. He can go and not score goals from a turn. Here's Vandro, he's in and shoots into the keeper, but a really good chance for him late in the first half. We've got seven minutes or six minutes-ish to go in this first half of the match. And it's been all us. 
based on the highlights, which I like, very positive signs, and we seem a bit more uh, defensively secure. Having said that, we've turned the ball over, but Pirotti has won it back, knocking it back to Wally. How many times have we seen that over the last couple of seasons? And Wally wasn't even a player I signed. He was already here on loan with a permanent transfer arranged. When we arrived, two Octobers ago now it must be. But I like him, and he's come good. So no complaints. He's done the job. Ball in. Ranakia lurking underneath, but Kowal gets the spilled ball, plays it back into Adopo, back to Perotti. Is the highlight... No, nope, it's going to end. I was going to say, is the highlight going to continue from here? Are we going to go on the attack? The answer was no. And I cut myself off. It is time for everyone to dig in. Let's pump the fists. None of you were that bad. You all played well, but we need a goal. And Evandro is the great right hope in that respect. Uh, Gallo is on a 6.4, so mm, that's not ideal. And he's picked up a knock. And Fruchtel's picked up a knock, which is not great. So we might make some changes soonishly just to uh, protect some bodies. We'll do that now. So Antonio Gallo can come off. And we've got Maturo, we've got Dichiara. Uh, I think we'll play Maturo because he is a little bit fitter. Uh, Evandro not having his best day at the office just yet, but it's early days and Ranakia is nervous and I don't really want to play a nervous player. Everybody else is nervous too. Segro is not fully fit, but he's focused. I've started paying attention to the body language for some reason. I don't know what that's about, but Segro is going to come on and run around and kick the football for us and get some fitness into his bones. He got injured right uh, in the middle of pre-season, if I remember correctly, which upset me a little bit we've now got some very tired bodies in and around the midfield so a couple more changes on the way uh just pause the game gp uh stefano pasucci is a youngin uh he's 17 years old he's got a bit of potential and i'm going to use him in the first team squad because most of his attributes in the areas that matter for a defensive midfielder are pretty good so i'm going to use him that's that's what's happening there uh, he can also play central midfield, which I might get him to do for us as the advanced playmaker. Or, rather than that, I'll just play him as a central midfielder on defend to shore things up. And we can push Ratnik forward and have him play. What am I doing? What am I doing? We'll drop Ratnik in there as the halfback, not Pasici. We're going to throw Vasic on. Vasic is a new job rather than the attacking midfielder, which we're not using anymore because we've advanced beyond it. We're doing fancy things. He's going to play midfield this season, mostly uh, because I was unable to sell him. So that was a thing. And Alessio Vitaro is going to come on as the inverted fullback on the right-hand side. He's back at the club. He's nervous, which isn't ideal, but that's all our changes. Everybody else is just going to have to power through and make something happen. If we unpause the game, it works heaps better. We've got fresh legs now in midfield. We've got a, a revamped engine room. We're going to encourage the lads. And I think we're just going to go attacking for the last few minutes and see if we can make something happen. It's not looking promising. Let's just go more direct and see if that makes a difference. And I might turn off work ball in the box because it's just an instruction. I can't really get working. And it doesn't make sense when we've got so few players in attack. So I think we will turn that off in the tactic. Um, it is slightly disappointing, but overall, to come away with a point, we haven't lost in our first game of the season. Comfortably mid-table. We're already in 11th, so mission accomplished. We wanted to finish higher than 13th. We're done. In the season now! Uh, we won't do that. We'll press on. We've got another match in just three days. So we'll start uh, recording here. I'll do what I've got to do to get everyone ready. And I'll see you uh, at our home ground for the Udinese game in just a moment. We are ready to face Udinese. Nothing exciting has happened. You've missed absolutely nothing. And I don't even think I've changed the team. So we'll have a look at it. Uh, Frito in goal. Gallo, Mercadali, Velukovic and Pierozzi. Uh, right back. Uh, Adopo, Ranakia, Urbanski, Saidi on the left. QL on the right. And Evandro up front. I did toy uh, with playing Chauna on the right-hand side. But I want to give QL a bit more of a run. Uh, just to see what he's about. Evandro gets a nod up front. We've also got another young, uh, gifted striker. Uh, gifted, no pun intended. Gift Sakahani uh, is there on the bench to come on if Evandro underperforms 
again, which hopefully he won't. I've also just tweaked some training because Vasic wasn't playing uh, training to play the midfield role I wanted to do, and Ratnik wasn't training as the inverted fullback that we use on the right hand side. So I've addressed that. That's all fixed, and now we can go and uh, kick the ever living snot out of Udinese. Hopefully, we're at home. We're at a home ground. We need to turn our stadium into a fortress, and hopefully, get a result, get three points and get the ball rolling. Lots of get in that statement. A whole bunch of getting. Get in, kick it off, let's go. I could turn off the match day experience so I don't have to keep skipping those things, but I won't, I really know I won't. I just won't remember. Perotti now, over to Urbanski. Plays it back to Perotti, plays it inside, looking for Ranakia. Finds him, he's run it all the way to where the ball came from originally, which is a bit odd. Dope now lays it across to Walu, to Mercandali. We're trying to open up some space on the left-hand side. Sidi is cut off, though. and can't find space to run into. Here's Kuol. Burst inside. Shoot. And Darren Kuol has got his second goal of the season. Lovely stuff from the Australian. I knew it was a good signing. We got him for free. Free for nothing. Not a penny paid other than his wages. He's come in as a backup. The injury to uh, Volpato, who's out for now four weeks, which is devastating. Uh, very timely for him, and he's grabbing the opportunity with both hands and giving it a jolly good shake uh, 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 right at the moment. And I'm fine with that. We're up 1-0 after 10 minutes. Very different story to when we used to concede goals in the first two, three minutes of every game. And I'm thinking it's the formation that we've just shored things up at the back a little bit. The extra body as the halfback dropping in to, to help out the centre-backs, Mokandali and Velukovic, making things a bit more difficult. We have given away a free kick there, though, but Fruchtel rises to the occasion and cuts out the danger. Now rolls it out to Mokandali, up to Gallo on the left-hand side. Saidi, again, looking for space, but can't find it. Runner key is in the centre. Over to Obianski, cutting through the centre. Shoots and scores from outside the area. That's his first goal of the season. A goal from midfield. We have not seen a lot of those in recent times. We haven't seen a lot of goals in recent times. Uh, if you think back to our strikers last season, our two top scorers had 12 goals between the two of them, six each, which is not great. If anybody can score more than six goals this season, I'm going to call myself a transfer genius. Gally taken another knock and needs to bounce back. Have I bought just a, a broken man? Is that what's happened there? Or are they just targeting him because he's brilliant and I am? A genius of transfers. We'll find out. He uh, he was bouncing back, but now he's not. I don't want to have to make a change in the first half. So if he can just nurse himself through the next seven minutes or so, that would be great. Abalski shoots again and hits the woodwork. The ball's booed back out to Wadopo. Abalski back to Perotti. Plays it inside, looking for the injured Gallo. Chips it over the top to Ranikia. Evandro's in and shoots, and now he's hit the woodwork. But a really good opportunity for Evandro to open his Serie A account. We speed on now towards halftime. Gallo is recovering from his knock, so I can panic a little bit less, but he's probably going to be one of our first substitutions in the second and a half, around the 60-minute mark, uh, assuming he can make it that far. That's a great ball from Ranakia into Evandro, and he scored, but the flag may have been up. The line has been, isn't making an indication, so this is going to VAR, and the goal's been disallowed. What has this poor boy got to do? Two really good opportunities, and it was kind of close. If we were judging it by his back leg, he would have been fine. But like horse racing, that's not how it works. Into half time though, and we're two nil up, and I am very pleased with the way things have gone. Uh, attackers wise, we're just going to pump the fists and encourage Vandro just to get involved a little bit more. It could be that advance forward isn't the way to go and we need to change the role up front for him but that is his best role he is our first choice striker this season it's as simple as that so we're going to stick with him and if i get frustrated i get frustrated i promise unlike Brunori, i'm not going to talk about it constantly but that is a 60 minute mark uh, i'm going to give evandro another 10 minutes just to see what he can do can you do any other role for me that might be useful he can play as a poacher so let's try that for 10 minutes and just see what happens. I am going to take Gallo off. He seems to be unaffected by his knock, but I'm not going to trust that. Maturo is going to come on again for him. 
And then in the midfield, I might take off Ranakia and we'll I, again aim to get some game time into Segre. And winger wise, I think I'm going to throw on Chayuna for who's more tired. Uh, Kowal's having a good game, so Chayuna can come on on this side and just plays the inverted winger. Lovely stuff. Confirm those changes and carry on, gentlemen, as you were. Again, 10 minutes for Evandro to do something awesome and capitalize on the chance, which he's not been able to do so far. Well, I mean, he has, but we conceded a goal immediately following my substitutions. I don't think those two things are connected. I'm not even going to show the replay. That's how unaffected I am by that goal. I don't need to see it. It's fine. Evandro's gone backwards, which is not ideal. So we're going to give ourselves a little present in gift Sakane and see what he is all about. Uh, you can't play complete forward. That is a dirty, dirty lie. Uh, someone else is tiring. Kowal now is exhausted. So I don't really know what to do about that. I don't have anyone I can bring on who is going to do a better job. What I could do is this and throw Chuna over to that side and then we can make a substitution in midfield and bring on Vasic. That works and then I can't make any changes after that. But it's going to be fine. And we'll see if uh, Gif Sakana gets a run in the next game. If he scores, he starts. That's the rule. I'm not disappointed in Evandre. He's a recent, a semi-recent addition to the team. Takes some time to bet in. He's got to learn the language. And he's only 18. We're playing the long game with this squad. Chona now with the corner. Crosses in. And while he's there with the header. Oh, set pieces work, everybody. We cracked the code. <laughs> Finally. But a good, strong header from Walu. That's his job when he's not defending. Get up here, get your noggin on the end of the ball and pop it in the back of the net. Good, str strong header down low and underneath the keeper. Perfect technique, it must be said. That's how you do it. Here's a dope now from the edge of the area. Lays it back to Perotti. Plays it forward to Chaume, or whatever his name is. Vasic cuts inside. Vasic shoots and Vasic has scored for the first time in a dog's age. He was missing out a lot last season because of all my tactical fiddling but maybe now we found a home for him in the heart of the midfield getting creative doing his playmaker things creating opportunities for others and here for himself 4-1 against Udinese this is a very good performance I'm going to praise the lads because I'm quite happy praise for everybody everybody smiling and pleased with the situation none more so than myself and this should see us rocket up the table to, to nosebleed territory for us. Okay, we're only two games into the season, so let's not get too carried away. But still, a very, very good performance. Even on possession, but we have dominated on XG. We've outscored our XG, uh, which is very, very nice. So that's justified. Four shots on target, four goals. What more do you want? Perfect stuff. And a great start. Well done, lads. Very good win for us. I am just going to have a little chat to Vandre that you weren't at your best uh, and needed to come off. But everybody else, magnificent. Very, very happy. And we're in fourth as things stand. I just saw it. Gallo is injured. He's going to be out for a couple of days. But thankfully, we've got eight days until we have to play Atalanta. Obanski gets man of the match. So we'll just give him a little pat on the head and say a jolly good show sir christian pulisic is playing for ac milan by the way he's 28 years old in this universe so now you know that and you can all sleep a little bit easier we are going to speed ahead we might even bypass up to him but all together because there's not a lot of games there and i think what we'll do we might even race a fair way forward and see how we measure up against roma and juve Good results there, and we are off to a fly up. Fourth place is crazy for little old Palermo. But if you've enjoyed that, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything moving forward, and leave a comment. Let me know how you think Evandro is going to go this season, why Gallo keeps getting injured, and why you think I want to get rid of Mr. David Weiss. 
let me know. But until next time, I shall see you next time. Say hi to your mum for me and be good. If you can't be good, don't get caught. Bye.